Let's talk about NBA betting picks for Thursday. What's up guys, the All-Star break is over and we're back with the daily NBA betting picks. Before we jump into those though, give me your opinion. What do you think about the All-Star game? Is it a cooked product? Do they need to move it to like the NFL, do a flag football? Do they, do they need to come up with like, are we gonna play a half court knockout or something like that? Personally, I think there is a place for the All-Star games still. I don't know why we got rid of the Elam ending. I love that. And one thing I do really want to see them add, which I think could enhance All-Star weekend as a whole, and this has been talked about before, I want to see a one-on-one -on -one king of the court three dribble contest. I want to see that, and I think there are multiple ways you can incentivize uh, teams and players to play harder. I think the best one I've heard is giving the winner of the All-Star Game home court advantage in the NBA Finals. I know people are going to push back on that and say, you know, someone like Trey Young, who I believe the Hawks are in 10th. Why does Trey Young determine if the Boston Celtics, who have the best record in the, in the NBA, determine if they're going to get home court or not in the Finals? What I would say is that, first of all, the, the coach – the coach is usually the coach of the one seed, or if not the two seed, they're going to want to play the players that give them the best chance of winning that game. So that will further incentivize them to make their players play even harder in, in, in the all-star game. And then on top of that, you know, there's already a conversation about is the team that has the best record, is it fair for them to get home court in the finals as well? Because uh, I think it was, let's see, Warriors Celtics. I believe the Celtics had home court in that. Am I tripping? Did the Celtics have home court in that? But the Warriors did end up winning the finals. And you can make the argument that the East was easier than the West. So, of course, the Eastern Conference team is going to have a better record. I think it's already a bit dicey as it is. So, I don't think this introduces any new variables that we aren't already talking about. But that aside, we are here to talk about betting picks for Thursday. And let me go ahead and just jump right on into these guys. Got three lined up for you today. It's the return from the All-Star break. So, Kind of similar to how we go, we look at things at the start of the season. You know, we're not quite sure who's going to come out hot, who's going to come out cold. Um, a team like the Cleveland Cavaliers, who won 18 of 20 games, are they going to be able to continue that after a week off? We're just going to have to wait and find out. But I bring up the Cavaliers for a reason, because I'm actually going to fade them here. I'm going to take the Orlando Magic at plus 7.5 on the road against Cleveland. Now, Orlando has not been very good straight up on the road. They're only 12-17, and 17, but they are covering about 56 and a half percent of the time on the road and they're the best team against the spread overall in the NBA covering more than 65 percent of their games so that's really good looking at the matchup between these two teams the the Cavs are very much kind of like the finished product of what the Magic want to be and Orlando's a very good team don't get me wrong wouldn't be surprised if they climb back up to a top six seed before the playoffs start but when you look at the strengths rebounding defense somewhat limited shooting and scoring wise with the spacing the Cavs kind of have the advantage in everything you know you could if you want to call defense a wash okay that's fine to me the Magic and Cavs get it done differently you know Cleveland's amazing on the interior not that Orlando's bad but they prefer to be hyper aggressive on the perimeter force turnovers they lead the league in points off turnovers and actually they're second to OKC but they're top two in points off turnovers so a little bit different on where the focus is but it is heavily on defense both teams are top seven in rebound rates so they don't give up many second chance opportunities they clear the glass they like to get out in transition and then offensively it's not the strength of their teams but when you look at the Magic's top scorer who's Paolo Bancaro a first time all-star and then Donovan Mitchell who can reliably give you 30 a night and is a top five top six MVP candidate the advantage does go to Cleveland I also think Cleveland has a little bit better floor spacing now guys like Max Struess haven't necessarily knocked down a high percentage of threes but they've created space and when you've got Struess and Mitchell and Garland and Sam Merrill and Lavert coming off the bench you got some shooters and enough to get a job done with all that being said though as I was kind of hinting that after a week off I'm not so sure that Cleveland can sustain the run that they were on you know it's one thing to go on that run in the first place it's another to just pick up after a week off and then regain that rhythm that momentum and refine that chemistry and just go roll every team in front of you Cleveland also you know I, I, I love what the Cavs did and I'm not trying to discredit them but they didn't play the toughest competition throughout a lot of that uh, a lot of that winning stretch let's look at some of their recent games they got the Bulls they got a 76ers without Embiid who they actually lost to 
the Raptors, the Nets, the Wizards, who are all terrible. The Kings, who are decent, but then you got the Grizzlies, the Spurs, the Pistons. You know, those are not good teams. And before that, you know, they beat the Bucks, they beat the Clippers, they did beat the Magic as well. They actually smoked them by like 27. So they did have good results, but it has been a while since they beat a good team. And then they also just had a week off. So wouldn't surprise me to see Cleveland win this game, bottom line. But I think it's going to be low scoring, defensive, and I think you can trust Orlando to go in there and get a job done. Franz Wagner the guy to watch in this one Evan Mobley's probably going to be guarding Paolo Bancaro which means Wagner's going to get Struess that's somebody he's taller than somebody that he can put a body into and dominate Wagner in three of his last six games scored at least 34 points so you need to look for Franz Wagner to have a strong night I think he can do it I think the magic can cover this line Another game that I like, and I do really, really like this one, I like the Dallas Mavericks at home, minus two and a half against the Phoenix Suns. So Phoenix has been awesome ever since they got the full compliments of Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant back out there. Those three, when they're together, alongside Grayson Allen and Yusuf Nurkic, have an offensive rating of 130. That is the fourth highest of any five-man lineup in the league, and it's more than 10 points better than the actual just overall team with the best offensive rating in the NBA. So they are handling business where on the, when they're on the court together, and they were also fourth in defensive rating over their last 10 games. Now that's, you know, that's not going to hold, but the signs that they even have that ability in them shows that if they can settle as like a top 10, top 12 defense with that offense, they're going to be incredibly scary. And that's a reason why I'm very optimistic on Phoenix going into the postseason. As of now, as of now. With that being said, though, Bradley Beal was injured, uh, re-aggravated a hamstring, and he's still dealing with his nose problem as well. Just before the All-Star break, he's currently listed as questionable. I don't think he's going to play. But even if he does, again, you've got that whole factor of he's banged up, coming off of time off. He's probably not really going to be in rhythm. I also don't think that Phoenix will sustain that top four defense. I think it's more likely you see them slide down to that 12 to 15 sort of range. Meanwhile, Dallas... I really like this team. I, I, I know that they've been frustrating and they've also dealt with injuries, you know, whether it's been Luka, Kyrie, and they have made some trades at the deadline. But those trades in particular for P.J. Washington, Daniel Gafford, I love the way that those two slide into this roster. I mean, when you think about your team, because... You know, you, it, it's one thing to judge how good a player is, but honestly, it's more about how well they fit into your team. And when you look at this Mavericks backcourt, Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, two of, if not the two best individual isolation scorers, just clear out, let me go get a bucket. Those are the two guys you want. And when they aren't doing that, what's happening? Well, they're hunting pick and rolls. They're looking to get downhill or they're going to step back or they're going to force mismatches. And then they clear out and go into their dribble package, et cetera, et cetera. Gafford and Washington are both really good screeners. Gafford is awesome at rolling to the rim. He's a good lob threat. Washington, also a lob threat who can operate out of that short roll or go back for the pick and pop. So you've got a whole new dimension of looks that you can throw at opposing defenses with these two guys. On top of that, Washington, a very good help side defender. And that's important because Derek Lively is going to be back in the lineup after he broke his nose. And I'll, yes, he's only 19 years old, but Lively is awesome. And he's going to really anchor this defense. The Mavericks in two games with Washington and Gafford, only two games, so a very limited sample size, but they had a 100 defensive rating. For context, the Minnesota Timberwolves for the year have a 108. They had a 100. They were able to get two wins, two decisive wins. I think that they're going to come back out. Luka's averaging 34 a game. Kyrie's been doing his thing, 25 points, about 40% three-point shooting. I think that you're going to be able to see the Mavericks really bring the fight to Phoenix. And we also know that Luka Doncic loves to bring the fight to Phoenix, okay? In two games against them this season, he scored a combined 84 points, the lowest. I think he had... 34 in one and 50 in the other. I think you see Luka have a really strong night. Phoenix takes a step back defensively and the Mavs get a decisive win on their home court. That's my second pick of the day. And my third and final one, you know, now that I'm looking at these games, I, these aren't just picks. These are really good matchups that we're getting here. I'm just now figuring that out. My final pick is going to be the OKC Thunder minus two against the Los Angeles Clippers. One thing I will say here, if you want to go with LA, I don't blame you. They're top five in road rating. And also the fact that, you know, George, Leonard, um, why am I blanking? Harden and Westbrook, they're all into their mid-30s, so the time off probably helped them, honestly, more than maybe any team in the league. You know, I, I give you all that. I'm not going to fight you. But when I look at OKC, 
I think that this is going to be a really good game for them because for a few things, we're going to see the debut of Gordon Hayward. Not that Hayward is an all NBA level player anymore, but he's the guy who's going to score 20 points. He's going to give them more size. You know, Josh Giddy. Josh Giddy is a, he's a serviceable role player, but I think people knew for a while that he didn't fit in that starting lineup. And Hayward is going to give them more size. He's a better scorer, maybe not a better passer, but he's not a selfish player. He's going to be able to move the ball on. This is going to be the best team that he's played with in his career. Um, you could probably say Boston, maybe Boston maybe was better overall, although I think it is debatable, but he was barely around. And then when he was there, he wasn't himself. So I digress. I think you're going to see a really good game from Hayward. I think it's also just going to throw a new look. You know, there's no really no scouting report on how OKC is going to play with this lineup. So the Clippers are going in a little bit blind to a certain extent. The Thunder are also one of very few teams that can match the Clippers in three point shooting. Both these teams right at the top of the league in percentage. Um, I love the aggressiveness that OKC plays with on defense. Not the best rebounding team in the world, but you know what? The Clippers aren't either. You know, Zubac is decent. He can go out there, get you eight, nine, ten boards. But Kawhi, George, they're not necessarily looking to crash the glass. Um, a side note, I do have an over on Russell Westbrook's rebounds. His line's only four and a half tonight. And I think that, again, the total lack of rebounding on the court combined with how many threes each team takes, I think you can see Russ go over. But back to the game, you know, OKC has just been the most consistent team in the league, maybe. Um, them in Boston, I think, are the clear top two. They're really good at road, but they're even better at home. They've got the second best home rating, plus 10 points per 100 possessions. Um, I just don't think that there's a whole lot of flaws with this team, and I just think they're a better team than L.A. You get them at home, and you only have to lay two points. I think that's where you go with this pick. And matter of fact, let me just go ahead and pull up some, some uh, against the spread trends here. I apologize. I should have had this open before, but I've gotten right in front of me. So OKC is the second best team in the league against the spread. They cover 62% of the time. The Clippers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 or 8. They cover 55% of the time. But obviously, OKC is doing better there. And then as a home favorite, OKC has also been really good. 68% as a home favorite. That's impressive. I think they get the job done there. But that's my three picks, guys. If you enjoyed, like the video, subscribe to the channel so you never miss out when I post with these. And before you head on out of here, do me a favor. Jump in the comment section. Let me know what your favorite betting picks for Thursday are. And until next time, I will catch you all in the next one. Have a great day.